Hello, and welcome to the Weapon Analysis and Tier List for Rundown 6. Before we get started, there are a few things that I need to go over though. For starters, this is both a tier list and an analysis video. I'm going to be going in depth on every single weapon in the game, and I'm going to be talking about a lot of stats and a lot of numbers, so things like damage, kill efficiency, ranges, reload speeds, reload cancels, fire rates, all of that. If that's not really your thing, then you might just want to skip to the end where I show the actual tier list. Another thing is that uh, I'm ranking each weapon based on their relative strength against one another, which means that if a weapon ranks lower, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad or it's useless or it's unviable, it just means that it's going to be harder to find success with that weapon compared to any of the other things that you could have used. Aside from that, there are some changes to how I'm doing things this time around compared to the last tier list video. For instance, this time around I'm not going to have a clip that shows the holding potential of each weapon because of all of the buffs that happened. Most of the weapons are really in line with each other, and a lot of the primaries are going to be ending up in the B tier anyways, so it would just be almost entirely redundant to try and show that. Also, because of how Rundown 6 has panned out, and just because of how many more ammo packs are in this rundown than other previous ones, things like ammo efficiency are still important, but they're not going to be valued nearly as high this time around than they were the previous time. And finally, a lot of the weapons we have this rundown were buffed to the point where they can all viably just kill things flat out, so staggers, again, are still important, but they're not going to be valued as much as a weapon's raw killing power. Anyways, with all that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So we're going to go in order of the way that the weapons appear in-game. So starting off, we have the pistol, and much like I said earlier, pistol is going to go into the B tier. So for the sake of brevity, I'm not going to go over every single stat that I show. I'm still obviously going to show all of them, but I don't want to spend five minutes on every single weapon. So I'm just going to list some footnotes that I wrote about each of the weapons. The pistol has high damage compared to most of the other primary weapons, and it has a 1.5 stagger multiplier, which is pretty good, which allows it to set up for a lot of easy follow-up headshots. You shoot one bullet, stagger the dude, another bullet straight to the head, boom, easy. It blows up heads in one shot, so when the head blows up, that's an even longer stagger than normal. You can one-shot stagger chargers. It has a very strong ammo efficiency. Uh, it has the fastest time to kill out of any of the primary weapons right now. Uh, unfortunately, it did get hit with a range nerf this rundown for both its minimum and its maximum range. Uh, it makes its kill threat noticeably worse because if you even have one meter of damage fall off, it will take four bullets to kill an enemy instead of only three. The pistol has a 1.0 hipfire accuracy, which is exceptional. It is the best hipfire accuracy out of any gun in the entire game for both primary or secondary weapons. Uh, the hipfire accuracy value is mostly arbitrary. It's very hard to really understand what it actually means, and I don't understand what it really means either, but all that you really need to know is that most weapons have a hipfire accuracy of 2.5, and the pistol is 1.0, so the pistol is at least two times better than most of the other guns. And finally, the pistol has a fast reload, being at 1.5 seconds, and it has an average reload cancel. Overall, the pistol is still a very strong weapon. It has a really good damage value, it has really good ammo efficiency, it has phenomenal stagger uh, for some levels this rundown, like D2. Uh, I take pistol every time just because of how easily and consistently it can stagger chargers. But that's pretty much all its redeeming qualities. It used to be some of the best killing power in the entire game, but because of the range nerf, it got knocked down a few pegs. Next up, we have the Hell Revolver, and the Hell Revolver is going into the A tier. So here are the stats for the Hell Revolver. The Hell Revolver has extremely high damage, and it can act basically as a mini DMR. The reason I say this is because a shot from the Hell Revolver to the head will leave enemies on less than 3 HP, which is very similar to the DMR, which leaves enemies on less than 1 HP. So it's not quite as good, but it's still very, very effective. Uh, on top of that, it has strong stagger, much like the pistol. Really easy follow-up shots, one to the body, one to the head, and they die. Uh, it also blows up heads in one shot. It can one-shot stagger chargers. And much like the pistol, it also has very strong ammo efficiency. It has a fast time to kill, which is at 0.4 seconds, which is pretty strong for most weapons. And the other really good thing is that although its range is only 10, uh, it basically has very long range because it can two-shot kill enemies for up to 25 meters away, which is really, really far. Uh, it has an above-average hipfire accuracy. It's at 2.0 instead of 2.5. Uh, its reload is slow to balance this out, but it does have an average speed reload cancel, so if you need to you know, switch your secondary early to shoot stuff, totally an option. And the other thing is that it is a hell weapon, it can hit up to two enemies per shot, so you can potentially double all of your kill efficiency, your staggers, and your ammo. Yeah, overall the Hell Revolver is a very, very strong weapon. 
Um, it's supposed to be balanced out by its slow reload, but it can be mostly ignored, and if your aim is good, then it's probably going to be the best weapon for you for almost every single level this rundown. It has ridiculous range, it has really good stagger, it has some of the best kill power this entire rundown for all the primaries. It's just all, all across the board, very, very strong. Next up we have the machine pistol, which is going into the D tier. So here are the stats for the machine pistol. Uh, much like last rundown, uh, its damage is still really, really low, and it has really poor accuracy and range, so it's going to make killing stuff and staggering stuff at a you know consistent rate much harder than it needs to be. It does have really strong ammo efficiency, which is probably one of those things only redeeming qualities. It does shoot extremely fast, though. It is tied with the choke mod shotgun for the fastest firing weapon in the game at 1200 RPM, which is insane. Despite that, it still has an average time to kill, being at 0.45 seconds, and its range is excruciatingly short. It has the same range that shotguns do. It has an average hip fire, and probably the only other redeeming quality that this thing has is it has a fast reload. It has the fastest reload out of any gun in the game at 1.25 seconds, and it has a fast reload cancel. Yeah, overall, the machine pistol is not in a better place than it was last rundown. All they did to it is change it from a 10 to a 9 shot kill with a very, very small damage buff, and then they also gave it more ammo so it just shoots more, and that's pretty much all this gun does is it just shoots, and it shoots a lot, and it just shoots. You're not going to kill much, you're going to stagger things sometimes, but you just, you just shoot a lot of bullets, and unless they're at point blank, it's not even going to do much. And even when they're at point blank, it's still outclassed by many other primaries. Next up we have the bullpup rifle, which is going into the C tier. So here are the stats for the bullpup rifle. Overall, this thing has pretty average damage. It's only slightly below the assault rifle, so it's not too bad. Uh, it also, like some guns like the SMG, has completely negligible recoil. For all intents and purposes, this thing is just a laser beam. The bullets just fly in a completely straight line, and the recoil is almost non-existent. Uh, it also has a high precision multiplier, which means that every single headshot is going to stagger enemies. So it has a pretty strong stagger that allows for, you know, really easy follow-up shots. It has okay ammo efficiency. It's nothing super crazy. Um, it also shoots extremely fast. It has about 1,090 RPM, which is just below where the machine pistol is, which is really, really fast. And it has a fast time to kill, being at 0.385 seconds. It also has a long range. It's 15 meters, which is much better than most of the other guns. And it has an average hip fire. Uh, this thing's main drawbacks is that it has a horrendous reload. It has a 2.4 second reload, which is the longest out of any primary weapon, and it also is the only weapon in the entire game currently that cannot be reload cancelled. If you reload this thing, you're committing to 2.4 seconds of not being able to do anything. This thing could be so much better, but its reload speed is actually holding it back by that much. If you're in any type of scan, once you empty your mag of this thing, as long as there's enemies in front of you, you never have an opportunity to ever reload it because you have to commit to the entire reload animation. Because of that, this thing typically has more downtime where you can't use it than it has uptime where you actually can. Overall, this thing just tries to be a really weird combination of the SMG and the DMR, where it has the fire rate and the mag size of the SMG, but the reload speed and the range of the DMR. It just fails on both fronts, and it creates this really weird, bastardized version of a gun that isn't really great in most scenarios. So, next up we have the SMG, and the SMG is going into the C tier. So, here are the stats for the SMG. The SMG does low damage, and much like the bullpup rifle, it has negligible recoil, and for all intents and purposes, this thing is just a laser beam. It also has strong ammo efficiency, and shoots very, very quickly. It has an average time to kill, and unfortunately it does have short range, which means if you're shooting at anything that's past 8 or 9 meters, your kill and staggers are going to be affected. It has average hip fire, and it has a fast reload and a very fast reload cancel. Overall, while the SMG is a direct upgrade from the machine pistol, the carbine is still a direct upgrade from the SMG, and the SMG is still outclassed by many of the single fire weapons, even at close ranges. It's not a terrible gun, I think it would go in B tier if the carbine didn't exist, but the carbine just honestly feels like it's just a better SMG. And speaking of the carbine, next up is the carbine, and the carbine is going into the B tier. So here are the stats for the carbine. Again, much like the SMG, uh, it has low damage, and it has completely negligible recoil. The carbine and the SMG actually do the same amount of damage per shot, the carbine just has a 1.0 precision multiplier while the SMG does not. The carbine also has okay ammo efficiency, 
and it also, much like the SMG, shoots very fast. It also has an average time to kill, and it has an average range being 2 meters higher than the SMG. Along with that, it also has a fast reload and a very fast reload cancel. Overall, this thing just feels like it's just a better SMG. I think one of the only things the SMG has over it is ammo efficiency, and it gets more staggers. But in Rundown 6, there is just a ton of ammo packs, so ammo efficiency doesn't really matter, and the Carbine can kill stuff a lot faster and a lot easier than the SMG can, and we are always going to value the ability to kill something over the ability to stagger something. In some scenarios, you may need stagger instead, but there are other guns that do that better than the SMG does, so overall, the Carbine just feels like a direct upgrade from the SMG. Next up we have the DMR, and the DMR is going into the A tier. And here are the stats for the DMR. The DMR has an extremely high amount of damage per shot, and much like the Hell Revolver, it has a semi-fire-and-forget playstyle, although this is more prevalent with the DMR, because the DMR on a headshot will leave enemies on less than one health, so any bullet from any gun will kill them. It has a strong stagger, which allows for really easy follow-up headshots, and much like the Hell Revolver and the pistol, not only does it blow up heads in one shot, it can also one-shot stagger chargers. Another huge thing that the DMR can do is that it can one-shot shooters. This thing does have poor ammo efficiency and a very slow rate of fire, and that accounts for a slow time to kill being at 0.5 seconds. It makes up for this because it has virtually infinite range, its falloff begins at 50 meters, and I don't think you'll ever hit a scenario in the game where you're shooting something outside of that anyways, so it might as well just be infinite. It also has average hip fire, and it has a slow reload and a slow reload cancel. Overall, this thing is still very strong. It does a ton of damage, and its ability to nearly one-shot enemies is not something that should be ignored. Unlike the bullpup, this thing does enough damage and has enough range for it to not matter about its reload, and it's also still reload cancelable, even though it's slower than average. Even though this thing isn't particularly great in close quarters, it has good enough damage and it has good enough stagger for you to get out of that kind of scenario if you ever find yourself in it. Overall, this thing is probably the only thing I'd consider a support weapon in the game just because of how much of an interesting niche it fills. Next up we have the Assault Rifle, and the Assault Rifle is going into the B tier. Here are the stats for the Assault Rifle. This thing has pretty average damage across the board and it has pretty average recoil as well, so... And that tends to be a recurring theme with this gun is that it's just average in everything. Uh, it does have strong stagger, much like the Bullpup, it can one-shot stagger enemies to the head, which means it's pretty, pretty good at staggering. It has okay ammo efficiency, its rate of fire is average, uh, it does have a very slow time to kill, it has the slowest time to kill out of any primary weapon. Um, despite the uh, fire rate buff it got this run on, it's just not enough to make this thing like kill quickly. But it has average range, it has slightly above average hip fire, being at 2.0 instead of 2.5. This thing has a average reload at 1.8 seconds and it has a fast reload cancel. Yeah, like I said, the Assault Rifle is just average across the board. It doesn't do anything particularly well, but it also doesn't do anything particularly bad either. The only bad thing about this gun would be its slow time to kill, but it can be made up for that because it does everything else in the game. It will literally do anything you want it to do. You want it to kill chargers, it'll kill chargers. It'll kill babies. You can put out decent damage against giants with it. It's good for spraying into horrors. It's good for tap firing enemies at a distance. There is literally nothing that this gun cannot do. It's also just not the best at what it does. So yeah, all in all, pretty solid pick. Next up we have the Burst Rifle, and the Burst Rifle is also going into the B tier. So here are the stats for the Burst Rifle. The Burst Rifle has average damage, and much like things like the SMG or the Carbine, the recoil on it is completely negligible and basically does not exist. The Burst Rifle also has the ability to kill enemies with one burst instead of two if you're playing as a client and not the host of the game. This is because of a weird interaction with how the game stores information such as enemy health. The Carbine also shares this property, but to a much smaller degree. The Burst Rifle also has average ammo efficiency, much like the Assault Rifle. It also has an average rate of fire, which again is very close to the Assault Rifles, being only about 30 RPM slower. It does have a slow time to kill though, being at 0.54 seconds, although this is still faster than the Assault Rifle. It has long range, it's a 20 meter range, which is the second longest range out of all the primary weapons, and it has a long reload and a slow reload cancel. Overall, the Burst Rifle is very, very similar to the Assault Rifle, but instead the Burst Rifle has worse staggers and holding potential against large hordes in exchange for better kill speeds and longer range. 
And last step for the primary weapons, we have the sawed off shotgun, which much like last rundown is going into the F tier. And here are the stats for the sawed off. Sawed off has extremely high damage, being at 23.6 if you hit every single pellet. This is enough to one shot strikers, and if you hit shooters in the head, it is enough to one shot shooters as well. This thing is also very strong against giants, being able to kill them in six bullets, or three if you hit them in the back. Uh, it has a strong ammo efficiency, it gets nine kills per refill, which is pretty good. This thing does have a very slow rate of fire, but it technically has the fastest time to kill. It's the exact same as the pistol if you're within optimal range, it is 0.3 seconds. Uh, it does have extremely short range. It is 4x40 meters, which is the same for most shotguns, but it's still very short. This thing has an average reload speed and a very slow reload cancel. It has the slowest reload cancel out of all of the primary weapons, being at 1.6 seconds. And much like the bullpup rifle, this thing has more downtime than it actually has uptime. Ironically, I think that the sawed-off shotgun got worse this rundown, despite the fact that it got buffed. And the reason for that is because every single other primary weapon in the game also got buffed in ways that really affected them, while the sawed-off got a 0.1 second faster reload speed and better ammo efficiency in a rundown where ammo efficiency doesn't matter. The problem with the sawed-off is that it has super inconsistent kill power. You only get three bullets, and I would expect those three bullets to actually count for something, but half the time when you shoot this, you don't even kill in your first shot, which reduces your kills per mag to nearly half, which makes this thing absolutely horrendous for killing things. The only thing that this thing does well is it can kill giants fast, but I don't know why it'd ever take a primary weapon to kill giants fast when things like the scattergun, the choke mod, and the sniper all exist. The only way that the sawed-off is ever going to see any actual use outside of meme and troll runs is if they make its kill power consistent by either increasing the amount of pellets and reducing the damage of the pellets, or by making it have similar spread to the choke mod so you can actually kill things from a reasonable distance away. Anyways, that's the final ranking for the primary weapons this rundown, so we're going to go ahead and move over to the secondaries. So because secondary weapons are a bit more specialized, they're going to be split into three main categories, being add clear weapons, boss damage weapons, and jack of all trades weapons. Generally, secondary weapons are a bit more level specific, and they obviously don't do the same stuff. The machine gun doesn't do the same thing as the sniper rifle, so I'm not going to treat them as if they are the same thing. So instead, they're being split into categories so I can compare them against things that fill a similar purpose. That being said, we're going to do this much in a similar way to we did the primary weapons. We're just going to go in order that they appear in game. So starting off, we have the heavy assault rifle, and the heavy assault rifle is going into the A tier. So here are the stats for the heavy assault rifle. The heavy assault rifle is an ad clear weapon, and it is very, very similar to the machine gun, so I'm going to be comparing it against that a lot. The heavy assault rifle does 5 damage per shot, which is really, really good because it allows you to stagger uh, strikers on any bullet. You don't even need to hit the head, which is very, very strong. Pair that with its fire rate, and this thing actually has one of the fastest time to kills out of any gun in the game, which is super, super good. It allows you to just spray into a horde and just clear a bunch of enemies super, super fast. The other thing that this thing particularly excels at is it is very, very good at clearing baby waves that are spawned by moms. Uh, all you have to do is just aim where the baby spawn, and you can just hold down left click and just shoot, and it kills. It shoots fast enough to just kill every single baby off spawn. Overall, this thing is very, very strong. It just cuts through hordes of enemies super, super quickly, and it has a good enough reload to be able to sustain fire very consistently. Next up, we have the shotgun, and the shotgun is going into the B tier. So here are the stats for the shotgun. The shotgun is a general purpose or jack of all trades gun. It has an extremely high amount of damage and is capable of one-shotting all small enemies, including chargers. It also does enough damage to kill giants relatively quickly and does a really high amount of damage to bosses because of its 1.0 precision multiplier. Because of its high damage and its general lack of being bad at anything at all, uh, it can be used for pretty much every single scenario and it's just a really solid option for when you don't know what to take or if you want to cover multiple roles at the same time. Overall, it's just a really solid gun. Just, it's not bad at anything and that's what makes it just really good. Next up we have the scattergun which is going into the B tier. So here are the stats for the scattergun. The scattergun is going into the B tier because it does literally only two things. It kills mom and it kills giants. It's okay against tank, but half the time you're just going to get yourself killed or just take a bunch of damage for literally no reason trying to shoot him with it, and most of the time it's both safer and easier to just shoot him with a sniper rifle. 
Also, trying to kill smalls this thing is just horrendous. It is so abysmally bad, it makes me wonder why I even bring it half the time in the first place. Because what it's good for, other guns can do the same job while also still being better for other parts of the game. Overall, this thing is just a noob trap. You basically use it if you can't aim with a sniper rifle, or if you want to bypass the learning process of how to kill boss enemies. The only reason this thing isn't in C tier is because its damage is just so ridiculously overloaded. Next up we have the Choke Mud Shotgun, and the Choke Mud Shotgun is going into the B tier. So here are the stats for the Choke Mud Shotgun. The Choke Mud is another jack of all trades or just general purpose weapon, and for most uses it's the exact same as the normal shotgun. The difference between the two is that the Choke Mod, you trade off slower reload speed and a smaller mag size for increased fire rate and increased range. It's just a slightly more specialized version of the shotgun, you basically have higher damage per second for slower overall sustained damage over a long period of time. So yeah, pretty much anything I said to the, about the normal shotgun applies to the Choke Mod. Just the Choke Mod, you're slightly worse for sustained fights, but you have faster DPS. That's pretty much it. Next up we have the Revolver, and the Revolver is going into the B tier. So here are the stats for the Revolver. The Revolver is another ad clear weapon, and what this thing specializes in is killing small to medium sized waves of enemies in a very quick amount of time. The really good thing about the Revolver is that you can one shot strikers and shooters, and it can also be reloaded very very quickly, which means that you can just keep shooting down waves of enemies as they come to you. If you can aim well, a lot of the time you can kill like half of an alarm wave before they even get to your team on scans, which is really really good. If you're confident with your aim, this is a really good weapon to take for just killing normal, standard, small enemies. Next up we have the machine gun, and the machine gun is going into the B tier. So here are the stats for the machine gun. The machine gun is another ad clear weapon, and this thing is really good for just spraying into a horde or for killing medium trickles of enemies. This thing does as what the name would suggest, you can just spray it, and you can spray it for a long time, it has 50 bolts in the mag and every single shot can stagger. There's a lot of scenarios where because of this thing's charge up, the heavy assault rifle will outclass it, but if you're in a scenario you just need to stagger things, the machine gun is basically unmatched. Overall it's pretty solid, it does exactly what it's advertised to do, it just shoots and it staggers. Again, it will get outclassed by some other guns just because they will kill instead of stagger and that's always better, but this thing is not a bad choice. Next up we have the hell gun, and the hell gun is going into the A tier. So here are the stats for the hell gun. The Hellgun is another jack of all trades or just general purpose weapon, and it is much like the shotgun and the choke mud shotgun, not particularly bad at anything, but what it is really good at is funnels. This thing is super super spammable, and it can hit up to 4 enemies per shot, which means if you just funnel everything through one spot, you'll accidentally kill half an alarm wave while you're just spamming this thing through a doorway. This thing is basically just a revolver that's actually good for other things that aren't just small enemies, and because of the insignificance of ammo efficiency this run down, if you're running revolver, you should just stop and just run hellgun because it's just better. Aside from small enemies, this thing's also good against giants, because again it is super spammable, can hit multiple at the same time, and because giants are slow as all hell, it is not hard by any means to get lineups on them and hit multiple per shot. Yeah, this thing's a really dumb weapon. Depending on who you ask, it's an S tier. Um, the only reason I'm not putting it in S is because I don't feel like it outclasses everything by that much, but it is definitely a cut above everything else. And last up we have the sniper rifle, and the sniper rifle is going to be our lone and only weapon in the S tier. So here are the stats for the sniper rifle. The sniper rifle is basically the fuck every single big enemy in existence weapon, and because of the ammo buffs that got this rundown, it's also the fuck anything I want to point this thing at weapon. It has a kill time of 0.5 seconds, and that includes giants, because it one-shots giants to the head, so you just point it and they get deleted. You can kill the entire hybrid error on C2 Extreme in less than 2 seconds. The whole point of the sniper was that it was supposed to be balanced out by being a very high power weapon, but it has low ammo, and now it doesn't really have any ammo problems because of the buff that it got, so it basically has no downsides. I don't understand, this is like the most nonsensical buff ever. They took a weapon, and they removed the only downside that it had to it, so now it's just flat out overpowered without question. You can kill a tank by yourself in one ammo pack. Like, it, who thought this through? Because it doesn't seem like anybody did. So, here are the final rankings for the secondary weapons this rundown. With that, we're going to go ahead and move on to the melee weapons. So, here are the stats for all of the melee weapons, and here is where they are ranking. 
Uh, I'm just going to show all of it straight out of the gate. I have a lot to say about all of them, and it'd be easier to just make comparisons where I can actually show what is strong and what is weak all at the same time. Melee in this game is strong because it allows you to be mobile while still being able to kill enemies, and you completely remove all of that with the spear. You literally cannot sprint with this thing, and it's, abso it's absolutely just crippling. The main benefits of the spear is that you're supposed to be able to get multi-kills and stealth because it can hit multiple enemies, and the fact that it has increased melee distance. Completely ignoring the fact that the multi-hit mechanic just doesn't fucking work right now, um, it's not even that useful because if you're not multi-killing three or more enemies, then it doesn't, it doesn't make a difference. You can very easily, without any problems, multi-kill two enemies with any of the melees. And if even if you're trying to go for a three enemy multi-kill, um, the bat and the knife are just better. They, they charge faster and they're going to be able to do the exact same thing. Even the hammer can get triple kills to some extent. It's not great, but it can still be done with it. Uh, the other thing is that the spear gets increased range, but inside of stealth it doesn't matter at all because you're either crouch walking up to every enemy or you're walk stealthing and everything's dying in 10 seconds regardless. The only time I would ever use the spear is if I'm learning how to melee kill giants or scouts, and I explicitly say learning because this thing is just a pair of training wheels. It's not going to carry you, but it's going to help teach you how to do it and get you comfortable with it before you switch to one of the actual usable melees. The spear can outrange giant melees, but so can the hammer. And the hammer, you don't have to break a limb to stagger the giant, and the hammer does more damage. Even with the Spear's Precision Multiplier, even with an Occiput hit, it literally doesn't change the amount of hits to kill from Spear to Hammer. It's the exact same amount of hits. There is really not a reason to use the Spear at all, because overall, its main bonus for stealth is completely irrelevant once you learn how to do it with other melees, and the fact that you can't sprint with it is just completely crippling for anything that you want to do that's outside of stealth. The knife is in a similar spot to the Spear in the fact that it's just a pair of training wheels. Um, the knife is there to teach you how to get multi-kills and stealth, but once you start learning how to do it consistently and start changing it up to like bat or hammer, uh, they're just better. Every single weapon, every single melee can clear basically just as fast as the knife can in stealth, and the amount of extra time that you save by using the knife is completely insignificant. I used a mod that made the level seed for each level the exact same every single time I ran it, which means enemy spawn points would be the exact same every single time. What you are seeing on screen right now is my fastest knife run versus my slowest hammer run. I ran it 10 times with each melee, and these are the results of that. It turned out that the knife was about 7 seconds faster on my best knife versus my worst hammer. That's That means nothing. I'm solo clearing an entire zone, it, 7 seconds is completely insignificant. In any normal game, you're not going to be solo clearing zones, and on top of that, even if you do that 5 times by yourself, that's 35 seconds saved off of probably an hour long run. You're not going to miss those 35 seconds. No one is going to miss those 35 seconds. They don't matter. If you really care about the charge speed, just use the bat. It's almost the exact same as the knife and you still get the stagger utility that you would get with the hammer. The other thing is that the only reason you would really ever run knife is if you're just a maniac in melee literally everything on the level, and even then, just use the bat, it's half the stamina cost of the hammer and the spear, you're going to get the exact same results. Yeah, the hammer and the bat just feel like upgraded versions of their respective melees, like the hammer's just a better spear and the bat's just a better knife. Like, if you are really that anal about stamina, sure, run knife, but... 90% of the time, it's not going to come into effect outside of, like, maybe C3, so you can just use the bat and be perfectly fine. Uh, and the hammer can do the same thing the spear does. It kills giants. Even the bat can still kill giants. Uh, the hammer kills scouts. The bat is just fast stealth and lower stamina. Uh, ultimately, the better you are at the game, the worse the knife and the worse the spear are just because of how stealth mechanics work and because they don't offer anything else besides slightly marginally faster stealth. Yeah, I just want to say as like a final statement, there's nothing wrong with running spear or knife. It's just, as you get better and better with stealth, they become less and less effective at whatever they're supposed to be good at. And it just becomes more beneficial to run hammer or bat because you can still clear at the same speed and then you also gain the added benefits of the things that the hammer and the bat can do.
So here is the final weapon tier list for Rundown 6. Anyways, that's pretty much all I've got. I don't really have much else. Um, I didn't talk about nearly as many numbers this time just because if I'm showing them on screen, I don't really see, feel the need to spend two minutes saying what's already on screen. I'll just talk about the things that actually matter the most. Um, but anyways, there's not really a point to this video other than just I like to talk about weapons and stuff. And I like stats. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed. I hope this helps with your, your, your weapon selection if you're having problems trying to figure out what to run and what's good for what. But uh, yeah, pretty much all I've got. And uh, you guys have fun.